We believe that when a person has the courage to stand up and share their personal experience and stories, the light shines brightness. When that story is shared through the lens of love and understanding for our fellow brothers and sisters, that story can change the world. Students here at AOA were challenged to write an essay about the role that diversity, equity, and inclusion has played in their lives. Today we celebrate the winners of that contest. Hello everybody, my name is Maya Washington. I'm a senior here at AOA. I've been here for five years and I am very, very proud to serve as a co-president of Black City Union. On my behalf of the admissions and the esteemed panel of judges, I want to thank all 28 entries into the competition. While there are only one grand prize winner, we also want to consider the, one, the winners for choosing to tell their story. Now let's get on with it. Out of the 28 essays that have been submitted, one finalist was selected from each grade level. Those essays were then ranked and the winners were selected from the pool of essays. Our first nominee is mentioned for $250 into um, your tradition, tradition reduction for 2022 to 2023, and the gift card for $25 goes on. Um, this certificate goes to Nakia Clark, class of 2026. Nakai, are you in here? Middle school. Middle school. Okay. Who's on Zoom? Thank you. Okay, then the second honorable mention prize for the $250 of tuition reduction and the $25 gift card goes to Aubrey Harris Welchin. reduction and they're also going to get a $25 gift card from me um, as soon as I go up to my office and get those gift cards I'll bring them down here um, but now I have the honor of presenting our grand prize winner the grand prize winners essay is the following throughout my teenage life I have made it through without much conflict. However, I cannot say the same for my toddler life, and it has shaped me into the person I am today. When I was in preschool, I had the pleasure of working with racist kids and teachers. The students almost every day without skipping a beat would gang up on me and assault me verbally and physically. It was difficult to make any friends, but I did not look like a person to them, rather, just a different species. I attempted to tell my teachers that I was punched or called names, but she would always take the side of the aggressor and try to comfort them. There was an instance where they mixed meat into my food despite knowing I was vegetarian. These experiences filled me with grief, anger, and frustration as I saw myself stuck in a system that I alone could not beat. However, as I grew older, there came to be a realization that I am, in fact, not alone, and many others are having a much worse time making it through their daily lives. It made me realize that all of the minority groups which are suffering individually don't need to be. We can band together. This is what I learned during my first move, but the core of my personality comes in my teenage years. I befriended as many people as I could, and still continue to do so, in hopes of sharing my experiences 
and taking their experiences as life lessons. The core lesson I learned was to dream on and know it wasn't Aerosmith who told me that. The core childhood experience gave me a first-hand taste of misery, and my teenage experiences gave me a first-hand first -hand taste of hope. My goal is not to persecute the lives of my oppressors, but make the lives of the oppressed better. I intend to start a real estate business, leading into a diner chain, homeless shelter, by using connections from my list of friends that I'm trying to grow exponentially. I want to provide well-paying jobs and earn money so I can put it right back into, into the community that are deprived of a fair start at the race of life. I believe that when children grow up with people of different backgrounds who are all given the same opportunities, they will come to see the world through a different lens. A lens where minorities don't struggle to survive, but live with their heads held high. When hands of all different shapes, sizes, and colors are put together, the focus shouldn't be what's different, but what we all have in common. A fair start from the starting line of life. And as the whistle blows to start the race, there won't be anguish for being slower than your peers, but just the appreciation that they could take part in the race. Because after all, everyone born into this world is special. Our grand prize winner of $1,000 in tuition reduction and a $100 gift card. In the class of 2023, our current student council president, the award goes to Shiv Patel. Come on out here, come on out here, come on out here, come on out here. Dr. Shamara J. Arkey. Dr. Arkey is currently serving as an assistant professor in the Department of Africana Studies and as the director of the Center of Pan African Culture, both these positions at Kent State University. She is a feminist scholar with expert knowledge and skills to develop and implement, facilitate, and evaluate curricula that promote institutional equity communication and access for traditionally marginalized students and families. Dr. Arkey serves as the founder and program director of the Ellipsis Institute for Women of Color in the Academy and as an auto-ethnographic researcher and creative nonfiction writer. She is one of the editors for Teaching Beautiful Brilliant Black Girls, curated to position classrooms as places of radical transformation and to amplify the voices of the black girls who inhabit them. Her work has also been featured on Democracy Now! and Yahoo. Dr. Arkey also serves outside the academy as an ordained minister through the Universal Life Church and the founder and, founder and lead experience curator for Sankofa Circle International, a boutique nonprofit providing capacity building to creative and social entrepreneurs. Please join me in welcoming, to, welcoming her to our campus. Shamara J. Arby, my pronouns are she and they. I do a lot in the community. Um, 
but my primary professional identity is educator. And so I'm overjoyed and elated to be in this space with you to talk about something that um, we don't always talk about in school or even at work, but to really capitalize on the stories that were shared through the essay contest. So shout out to all our contest winners one more time. important to celebrate, to continue to celebrate Black History Month. So, okay, we're going to start with an activity. I told you guys what, I was an educator, so that's where we're going to start. I want everyone to pull out their phones. Pull out your phone, pull up your favorite social app, whatever app that is, um, and I want you to share a hashtag. Um, so while you're doing that, the hashtag that I want you to share is BHM, like Black History Month, birthplace. BHM, birthplace. So here's the story. Um, so hashtags are considered new literacies, particularly in the wake of hashtag Black Lives Matter, hashtag Oscar So White, hashtag Me Too, hashtag NSARS Now. So we really have to understand the importance of hashtags. So this hashtag that you're using right now, hashtag BHM birthplace, is designed by us at Kent State University. So in 1929, Dr. Carter G. Woodson extended Negro History Week into what we know as Black History Month. Um, he decided to use February because of the birthdays of two famous black guys, Frederick Douglass, who was a Valentine's Day baby, um, 14, and um, W.E.B. Du Bois, whose birthday is tomorrow on the 23rd. In 1970, um, at Kent State University and the group of Black United students were the first organization at any education-based institution to officially celebrate Black History Month. So I want you all to join in that tradition and join us using that hashtag and helping to amplify the message that the work that we are celebrating almost 50, or well, a little over 50 years later, and the story of what it means to be black in America started maybe 45 miles from where we're sitting right now. And what you all have in common with what those folks who started have in common is your student identity. And that's really important. So let's talk more about the students. There's um, a saying that we use and it's called movement convergence. And it's when all of these social movements are coming together to this particular time and place to make this humongous impact in our society. So we know that Dr. King, right, Dr. King was also a student. So he was involved in these student movements. So when we think of what we know as the civil rights movement, it's a combination of the voting rights movement. We might have heard of organizations like the SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, or even the Mississippi Democratic Freedom Party. We also know about the black power and the the Black Power Struggle through the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, and of course the Black Panthers. But also, there's another organization called the Congress for Racial Equality, it's the CORE, and they're really focused on economic development and circulating what we call the Black Dollar. In addition to those movements, there's the LGBTQ movement. Uh, we know that Stonewall riots happened in 1969. There's the evolution of the women's rights movement, um, thinking of between 1966 and 1973. Um, then we know that there's the anti-war movement. The classroom, the college campus, became this space for radical transformation. It became this space where people could come together across lines of difference in pursuit of this common goal. And so this common goal was liberation from oppression. 
So why is it important for us to continue to celebrate Black History Month? Because students started it, and y'all are students, and y'all are the major keys to this. So a couple of years ago, I wrote my dissertation on the Stop the Hate Essay Contest. Some of you may be familiar with that. Students, uh, some of the Shout out to anyone in the room who's placed. Shout out to y'all. Uh, so I like essay contests. I told y'all I'm an educator, right? <laughs> so, but what I learned from this is that as a system, education focuses on students' outcomes and outputs, your grades, your athletic abilities, uh, your test scores, the things that you're producing. But it's important for us to begin to celebrate things like Black History Month and various identity-based celebrations because we have to understand that students are the sign makers, right? Students themselves are the sign. When we think about a student as a sign maker, it's an individual who centers their own lived experience through a double hermeneutic process to make sense of the world and to determine how and when to engage in it. I think that's what Dr. King was. He was a student who was experiencing a world that was vastly different from where he grew up with people who looked different and came from different places. And he decided to become a change agent and, become, and get involved in the fight. So I looked at the essays from the contest and it made me think about some things and thinking about why we should continue to celebrate Black History Month. The first kind of theme that came out was this concept of identity development. Reading all of these essays, uh, Schiff's essay talked about the core of my personality comes in my teenage years. So recognizing that there's something within himself that is going to shift as he becomes older. Aubrey talks about having grown up in a racially diverse family. Um, her paternal grandparents are of Irish and German and Haitian heritage and maternal grandparents of East African and Native American heritage, right? So understanding who we are and where we come from. The next thing I wanna talk about is this aha moment. So some people call it like the Eureka effect, but I want to call it an aha moment because y'all know Oprah Winfrey, right? You know, the woman who has the magazine and she's had the magazine for like 15 years and nobody's been on the cover besides her all the time. <laughs> Except for Breonna Taylor, so shout out to Oprah for that. But okay, so Oprah talks about these aha moments. She says that it's a remembering of what you already knew articulated in a way that resonates with your own truth. And so that's another thing about these hashtags, right? It's not necessarily new information, but it's a way, particularly for young people, to communicate and build community with other folks who share those same identities. So we see these aha moments in the essays. We see Nakaya talk about an encounter that another young girl had at the library where she was called out her name. We see Aubrey talking about her identity shifting her first year of middle school. We see Shiv talking about growing older, coming to a realization and the fact that while I may be different, I'm not alone. When we think about that movement convergence that was happening when Dr. King was a college student, that's happening right now. Today's classrooms are more diverse than ever. Young people have an opportunity to try on and try out new identities. And it becomes an important piece of this agency that you all have as young people. So when will you begin to position students as the sign maker, you all, as the sign maker? We understand that these classrooms help you to develop your identity, classrooms, teaching and learning spaces that are curated for radical transformation, help you have those aha moments about yourself, about the world, about the school, about life. And then, finally, classrooms give you that agency. 
Nakaya said, I will spread awareness. I will raise money. I will stop racism anytime I witness it. Shiv said, my goal is not to persecute the lives of my oppressors, but to make the lives of the oppressed better. That is a clear intonation on the agency that Shiv has to make this world a better place. And then Aubrey ended her essay and said, I pledge to myself that I would have uncomfortable conversations. And she quoted Arlene Vassal, who's the VP of Programs, Prevention, and Social Change at the National Resource Center on Domestic Violence, saying, I live my truth, communicate my truth, and my truth. So why is it important for us to continue to celebrate Black History Month? Because y'all are the ones. The spaces that you are in right now have been curated, have been designed for you to go out into the world and turn the tables over in the temple, right? That's what Jesus said, he turned the tables over in the temple. But these classrooms have been curated, have been designed for you to go out and make this world the best that it can be. And so I wanna congratulate again the essay winners. I wanna say to each of you, continue, continue to develop your identity, continue to work through those aha moments and continue to show your agency. Okay, and as I wrap up, I just want to uh, get us active one more time. There's uh, one of my favorite revolutionaries, her name is Asada Shakur. And she has a chant, which um, I love saying, I say it with my children on a regular basis, I say it in community, I say it with my students, and I'd like to invite you all to say it with me. Um, so it's a call and response, I'll say it and you'll repeat it. I'll ask if you are able uh, to stand up and join us with this. the call and response. You can repeat after me. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Okay, now I want us to say it again. I want us to uh, get into it, feel a little bit. Um, I'm going to step back from the microphone because I'm going to get a little bit louder. I invite you to join me in getting louder. And even if you want to, you can put your fist up, right? All power to all people. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. If our award winners could just hang out for a moment after um, the assembly, we'd like to grab a very quick picture. Um, she'll come on up. And I feel like I've spoken many words today, but today will be short and sweet. So, I uh, faculty dismissed.